Looks like it's time to begin. And we're at the top of the hour. <clears throat> so we'll get started with our presentation. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad to see you here at the conference for Virtual World Outworlding Reconnaissance, ascertaining a PLC. Ellie and I wanted to use the conference theme of reconnaissance today, um, meaning to ascertain information for planning a strategic mission, particularly in a battle. And we feel that that applies to the obstacles that we face for our future in virtual worlds for education. So we're dressed today as force cadets to emphasize this connection to us all joining forces. And our goal today is for you to take away some strategic plans for tackling obstacles ahead. And um, certainly, already many of you have access to a professional learning community, a PLC. Um, but today, we hope to give you potential ways to expand your PLC, professional learning community, to meet your own goals and to meet your own missions in virtual environments. So I ask, how are we going to face the battle of virtual space platforms for education? And really, we believe there's only one way we can do that, and that is together. So first I want to ask you all how you feel so far during the conference, and I thought I might ask you to type in the text chat. Um, I know it's very exciting, but it, it can also be um, overwhelming when you go to all these great presentations. So if you would type in the text chat, How do you feel so far? Do you, are you feeling excited, challenged, a bit overwhelmed? We get so many great ideas from other educators. Inspired, I see Agile Bill, Bill says. Um, and Willow uh, says, a combination of both excited and overwhelmed. Um, elated, all of the above. Um, because we get all these great ideas, but I've also heard a lot of obstacles at some of the, the sessions that we're, we're attending. Um, and we're going to address some of those obstacles that we face today. We can join forces when we think outside the box. And how many of you are familiar, look at the slide, virtual outworlding. Anybody know what that is? Type in text chat if you do. I bet you're all familiar. Virtual Outworlding is a sponsor and has advocated this conference for years. Yes, Marie, it's Selby's blog. And I wanted to put this up here because Virtual Outworlding being Thinkerer's blog and Thinkerer being the first to achieve the Thinkerer Award from this great conference, uh, Thinkerer's blog is a rich resource. And, you know, we need some strategic planning, and I've been reading a lot about PLCs recently on Thinkerer's blog, because Selby Evans, as many of you know, has been a champion in the fight for awareness and the adoption of virtual worlds and virtual environments for years. So if you're not already following his blog, I certainly suggest that you bookmark it. Uh, this blog is full of resources for learning in, in virtual environments, and you can search um, for all kinds of different topics and tips in, in uh, multiple virtual worlds. Tech tools like OBS, Open Broadcast um, System, which is great for recording your machinima. Shotcut, um, resources for flipped webinars, and, and much more. So, you know, we really can't face the battle ahead alone. We learn from all of you at this conference, but also by sharing things like Selby's blog. So we have to gather our forces, and I know we're all aware that there are a lot of resources out there for us to do just that. So continuing with this battle theme, in professional learning communities, why is there a need for reconnaissance? Well, first of all, we, we have to investigate what's the purpose of our battle here. And of course, we have to identify the enemy. And for us, 
That includes constantly changing platforms. Those are our moving targets. Another one, the plethora of virtual world spaces. We hear, we've heard about them throughout the conference. Way too many choices for applications and tools. And difficulty in communicating across numerous communication channels. So we cannot accomplish our mission alone. We have to join our forces, and we've said this before, but we have to continue to figure out the best way to do that strategically. We have to pool our resources and continue with a strategic timeline. Here's an example of sharing some resources with each other. I'd been struggling for years to get my machinima nice and clear, and it was my PLC that helped me do just that. Just this past year, my professional learning community, and many of you right here are in it, you know you are, um, have helped me grow my, re my virtual world skills. Um, Discord for back channeling when we're out exploring virtual spaces that don't have voice. We can use a back channel like Discord. OBS, as I mentioned, for recording machinima, both audio and video. We can help each other learn how to get the high quality. And then Shotcut, an open source editing tool, because a lot of our tools are constantly upgrading, and some of these are open source, which has become my new best friend. Open source applications are free, and people contribute and to the upgrade to make sure that they're working as all of our platforms and operating systems um, you know, update. So using Selby's blog and all of you, my professional um, learning community, all these connections, both in-world and in other spaces, have helped me tackle um, a lot of my learning curve and my virtual world battles. So then we are sharing them across communities, such as the Nonprofit Commons, where Ellie and I have both I have been on the board and Ellie has just recently joined. So many educational communities are active here in Second Life and other virtual environments. So these particular tools I'm mentioning might not be the ones that you need, but your PLC can match the tools that you need with your own mission and the goals of your own community in virtual worlds or communities. You may have more than one. So not only do we have many, many tools that are emerging, upgrading, changing, we also have so many worlds to explore. Type in the text chat if you're in any other worlds beyond Second Life. I know many of us are exploring other platforms. Yes, uh, Marie's been all over the metaverse, both with headset VR and desktop. Agile Bill, I've bumped into spaces for over a decade. So look, yes, most, a lot of you are in World of Warcraft, OpenSim, all of these other platforms, 3D web worlds, all of the um, easy access web worlds. Um, so you're typing a lot of them. Yes, and that's what we're going to talk about next with your PLC. <laughs> and Real Life 1.0, yay! <laughs> yes, Ellie is going to talk about all of these worlds. So I'm going to hand the mic over to Ellie. Thank you, Val. Why the need for reconnaissance? How do we plan a strategic mission to help us through all of this? I evolved into a technical person as I was trying to be the best educator that I could be. Technology was an amazing opportunity and daunting task as well as education realized technology was here to stay. Many of you were likely there as well. I was fortunate because I was a young teacher and when I was, when a very pricey computer was plopped into my classroom, I wasn't ex as excited for the tool because I was a busy educator and just wanted to know how it would enhance my students' learning. And to be honest, I watched the more experienced teachers become uncomfortable, as they felt like they weren't prepared to include computers into their teaching. And that didn't even include the internet and all it had to offer. It was a good lesson for me as I became a leader 
quite accidentally, <laughs> in how to use technology well in teaching and learning. I lear also quickly learned the value of PLCs. I eventually did my research around them. And then I feel like last year, even though it was years later, educators felt that on steroids. Now, online education was plopped into their classrooms. The world literally changed in a week or two. Many just tried to do what they normally did in a classroom via Zoom. Who could blame them? Their classes went online with little notice or support. Some students really tried, especially in higher ed where I teach, but many students opted out in multiple ways, and that was very frustrating for our instructors as they were trying to deal with that and everything else. I say that to say that it is difficult to have many tools that you aren't familiar with. Have them thrown your way in both education and other disciplines, especially if you are good at what you do. If you're an expert and successful, You've really figured it out already, and now all this? Really? In virtual worlds, we can still feel this way. Are there too many worlds? What about VR, AR, XR? It can really be overwhelming. And the answer, as always, is help is in reach. In your PLC, your colleagues, your groups, your friends, we are stronger when we join forces to explore the best place for specific purses, purposes, web-based worlds, desktop virtual worlds, or VR. How do we find what is best for us? What is worth our time? How do we find help that is already there? CVL has been on a mission to bring us all together to help each other. We have several tools to use. The first is the CVL Education Network. It is as simple as a spreadsheet with coffee, times, offices, hours, or whatever you want to call them. Of the many most experienced VW educators' time when they are logged in to talk with others and help however they can. We can find each other using this simple spreadsheet and not just in Second Life, but in all those other virtual worlds that you guys were talking about earlier. And we've included the link here in chat for you. If you are someone who has coffee or office hours, please contact Val or me, and we would love to add you to it. And we hope that you utilize it and check on it often. There are so many words for this, but all, they all kind of culminate into a professional mentor. And that in itself is a strategic mission isn't it? Many of you are that. And there can be many ways to mentor, coffee and office hours, reference services, and a new idea that is happening around the metaverse. The cross-community campfire chats. You might have seen these a couple of times at BPE this week. Those are groups of folks within virtual world groups that are offering regular times for their community members and others to come together to share ideas and solve problems. We can also put your campfire chats, no matter what you call them, on the VWEDU spreadsheet. So how do we explore enemy territory? The misunderstanding between VR and VW is one of them. Everywhere I go and share about virtual worlds, VR comes up. I'm sure that happens to you too. Literally, it did just last week with a dean and chair of our medical school. These are literal battlefield obstacles that are real in our wor world when we try to decide where do we bring our students? What tool works best to help them learn? This can be that same tool overload that causes us to do just nothing. For us to stay with the same thing we've always done. 
to hide in our bunker. Please don't hide. Let your colleagues help. My department was insisting that I explore VR with my students. This was several years ago. The only thing I could find was Google Cardboard that they could afford. I tried to use my smartphone, but at the time, it didn't allow me to participate in anything that was collaborative space in VR, and that's what I'm looking for. So eventually, I purchased a headset. About the same time, I found the VR Exploder Club. Several colleagues that were also checking out the viability of VR for teaching and learning, and all were VW folks. Hi, Marie. <laughs> they helped me gain awareness of other virtual spaces. Once a month, we go to a different VR space. Some are very limited. Others are gaining popularity and offer more. I feel like this has helped me have some experience to know what is out there and what might work for me and my students. It also helped me know that a headset is a challenge for me personally. But many are available that, are, that just use my desktop which is very helpful. Having colleagues to share their experience and to partner exploring things is so powerful. As my grandmother used to say, two heads are better than one. I love that there's a lot of research that support that as well. Together, we are better. So a multitude of worlds don't have to overwhelm us. <laughs> Professional learning communities make that happen. You don't have to be everywhere, but you can be aware. <laughs> I wish I had two heads too, but I do <laughs> have a alt. Thank you, Ellie. Yes, um, uh, some of you right here are already a great professional learning community and many of you have gone on some of these VR Exploder adventures every month um, and so you can contact Marie or or me and get more information about that later if you want to explore some of the VR environments so much misunderstanding between virtual reality on a headset and virtual reality which we're in right now on a desktop so the Community Virtual Library, as a group, and many of you are part of that group, we're trying to plant flags across the metaverse and not just be in one spot, realizing that this is a constantly changing virtual world. And there are many spaces that are emerging. We, emerging. we don't know where, where we'll be five years from now virtually, but we know that um, we've paved the way for learners, um, those that have been early adopters. So um, you can too go explore these other places and have someone with you. We can't master them all, as, as Ellie said, and, and be in every single place, but we can be aware of them. So some of the places that CVL has planted flags, many of you know the web-based worlds, 3D web worlds, Cyber Lounge, some of the, the spaces where you're simply on the web with no viewer. But also in Kitely, we have quite a bit of a presence. And if you're not familiar with Kitely and you'd like to try out um, hypergrid jumping across some of the open source platforms, OpenSim, um, I think Beth Bethany's here too. Bethany is our director and leader of our hypergrid resource library in Kitely. And she's planned an event here. Um, type in chat, Bethany, I believe it's. Um, Next Sunday, not tomorrow, but the 28th, we're going to hypergrid jump across Kitely. Great opportunity for you to kind of explore other virtual environments. So we have um, that library that helps you explore across the um, open sims. And then we also have the antique pattern library in Kitely, which is growing to share 
authentic patterns for historical simulations. If you're an artist and you're interested in authenticity in old patterns um, throughout history, contact us later. We've got that. And I think what I'm showing you here with this, these libraries and spaces in Kitely is that each virtual world space, space should have a clear purpose rather than just planning the same thing everywhere and then saying, come in, you know, come here and get this. We don't need to reinvent the wheel and, and, and put that same exact building everywhere. We need to have a clear purpose for what we are doing. Um, and that way we are growing and sharing what really, um, what really is important and purposeful in virtual environments rather than being in any kind of competition with others. So um, that antique pattern library is a unique virtual space filled with authentic antique resources. Um, we can embed these into virtual en environments beyond reinventing the wheel. We also have our Digital Citizenship Museum in Kitely. And all of us here are digital citizens. And we have all been working for some, some for many years and some just for a few years to understand what a digital citizen is and how we can be learners, educators, and um, share meaningful content in these environments. And the Digital Citizenship Museum curator, that's Marie here. She's also the VR Exploder um, leader. This museum has all kinds of resources on digital citizenship, such as privacy, cybersecurity, how to be a good digital citizen, um, and even digital archives and digital legacy. We have an underwater archival room that talks about the importance of archival in digital worlds. Um, most content on the planet now is born digital. And if we don't understand how to archive that, some people even say we could enter the virtual dark ages. It's an essential um, problem that we need to overcome. How to migrate content digitally from format to new format. So that's the Digital Citizenship Museum. And then we also have our new educators makerspace coming up in um, Kitely. If you're interested in contributing content that other educators could use, you could contact me later as our makerspace will grow in Kitely. Yes, Bethany just posted in her link for a really fun Easter egg hunt in Kitely, uh, one of the after um, the conference immersive experiences. So as we say, we're exploring all these other worlds. And as Ellie mentioned, we uh, believe that both desktop VR and headset VR um, are virtual worlds. And they're both VR. Virtual reality has much misunderstanding. Um, I prefer desktop VR. It's less cumbersome to me. I feel like my hands are tied behind my back when I'm in my headset. But I don't want to get closed-minded. So I go with the VR exploders, even though it's uncomfortable. Um, because how can I explain to others uh, that I like uh, desktop VR better if I don't ever try a headset. And, you know, they are going to evolve. They'll get more comfortable. We will get haptics in the future. Just finished Ready, Ready Player Two. I don't know if any of you have read Ready Player Two yet, but, wow, it brings up some of the obstacles. It may be sci-fi, but sci-fi sometimes influences uh, reality. So um, it's important that we investigate all of these um, somewhat, but we can't do them all. We can only do them together. So continuing with this battle theme, you know, in a battle, you've got to have allies. You've got to form alliances. And uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. All of our virtual world educational communities, they are allies and they are alliances. And you sitting out here, you, you have certainly helped me by being an ally, both personally, professionally, and definitely through um, communities. The Community Virtual Library considers all educational communities here in Second Life and beyond to be resources. Just like in the old days, books were the top resource for a librarian. You are a resource, you and your communities. And those resources, we can connect and we can share them. As I said, just like books, 
were the top resources in libraries in the past, some of our virtual world communities are shown on this slide right here. Maybe your community's up here. If not, you need to contact me because we want to highlight the work you're doing in virtual worlds and not let that just fade away after this conference, but highlight what educators have done, are doing, and are planning to do in the future. We've found that it's really difficult to keep up with them all. And look at the slide, we've got the nonprofit commons, Rockcliffe, which has hosted this amazing conference for a long time, the virtual pioneers, the virtual world education round table, um, Inspiration Island, and many more wonderful communities. We collaborate with them. Ellie and I both, um, through the nonprofit commons, we're on the interaction committee to make more interaction among these allies and alliances. And along with that, um, the Community Virtual Library creates a virtual world database. And um, if you, any librarians or anyone interested in this can volunteer and help with this database so that we can continue to archive what's going on in virtual environments. Um, and we also are striving to have a list of all the many calendars of all these educational groups who are our allies and alliances. Have you ever missed events because you didn't find out about them until they were already over? Too many in-world notices or they're capped, your IMs are capped, or you just can't keep up with all the many group calendars. So we are um, striving to have a one-stop place where you can find what everyone is doing and locate those calendars when you want to locate them. And it's, it's a constantly changing um, problem because you know there's so many different communication channels, we have to keep working on that and we can only work on that together. So Ellie's now going to share some ways that we can connect and keep up because we can only do that if we all work together. Ellie? Oh, and listen up, because this is the big takeaway of the day. Drum roll here. <laughs> Thanks, Val. <clears throat> We're actually pretty proud of it. Um, we are actually moving forward on the virtual front. This year, several education groups, once again, probably, realized that we need to work together to share resources, be aware of what is happening in educational, in the educational world and VWs, and work together to solve challenges. Though their main goal was not to make more work for folks, because we know that everyone is so very busy. We are also, our big goal, and you'll hear Val and I talk about it over and over, is not to reinvent the wheel and not to have a lot of meetings. We know that folks are doing good work here and we don't need to reinvent the wheel. That birth, the VWEC, the Virtual Worlds Education Consortium. We have four meetings a year. You are welcome to all come or send a representative from your group. We are developing tools to share resources, experiences, and skills. We are developing a database of groups and educators that use VWs to teach. And we would love to have you join us. Our next meeting is April the 7th at 9, 9 o'clock a.m. SLT at the VWECE Skybox, and here is the LM. We would also love to have you come, be a part of our database of educators, because we're trying to bring everybody together, and here's the form for that. Thank you, Bob. And please note if you want to be included in information about the VWECE events. Back to you, Val. Thank you, Ellie. So we'd like to um, encourage you to visit our Virtual World Education Consortium exhibit. Um, let me grab that landmark for you real quick, too, so you'll have it. Um, and it's right there in the text chat as well. 
Um, uh, yes, I can. I can. We'll have an open questions, and I'll look at all these questions at the at the close because um, it's it's difficult to keep up with all these resources, and so I know there'll be some questions about where they're housed. So we'll do that during our question and answer, and I'll give you that the link then the landmarks then as well. So we're always really happy to be part of this conference. And um, so we're going to give you, as I said, all of the information right at the close. We'd like to uh, encourage you to explore the exhibit, because there you can pick up what you're seeing on the slide right here, your own bookmobile, if you would like to, to have on your own sim. And I know some of you may not have room for a big bookmobile, so there's also a little small version. <laughs> and inside that bookmobile, will be the resources about the Virtual World Education Consortium so that you will have a place to share that with your own educational community. And there's also uh, a toolkit inside that has uh, some of these resources that we're talking about today because we all realize we cannot do this alone. And I'm very happy that um, our website, the Community Virtual Library website, will also be a space to archive um, everything that has that is taking place at the Virtual World Education Consortium. So there'll be a place to archive local chat, to um, just get more information about the consortium. And um, there in the skybox at the consortium where we hold our quarterly meetings, we will have some portals to the various virtual world communities and uh, educational resources that we can add there as we grow and change in the future. You know, we can't all be experts at everything in virtual worlds. We are, we're not all um, love to do presentations, field trips. We're not all excellent builders or scripters, um, but we can, we can all contribute whatever talents and skills we have and what we personally love to do. We don't have to be experts. We can use our professional learning community. Um, if you are as interested as we are about a professional um, learning community, um, there are three sites um, that you can read more about professional learning communities um, right here. One uh, Selby suggested um, and, and some other things about the importance of effective professional learning communities in education. So we want to encourage you to friend us if there's anyone here that has not already friended, friended us. And you see the group joiners here. There's one to the left for joining the Community Virtual Library and one to your right for joining the Virtual World Education Consortium groups in Second Life. But just in case, we're also going to include our emails here. And um, Ellie and I want to remind you that this conference really does a great job of highlighting wonderful work that virtual world educators are doing. It's really important, and we need all of you in order to document that work that's been done and in order to help us all move forward strategically. Um, I'll also encourage you to jo join, you know, the SLED list, which was the Second Life Educators List Serve. We were, a lot of us were disappointed when that ended because it was a great one-stop place to go email everyone across the metaverse, and that no longer exists. So we would like to encourage you to join a Google group if you would like to get emails from all the various um, communities for education in virtual worlds and VR and across the metaverse. And that Google group is called Metaverse Libraries. If you can't find it, you can always um, you can always email one of us. But join that group, and you can also post things in that group. Another way to help us all connect. It's one word, no space. Metaverse Libraries. And we're glad we have a little bit of time because I know you have a lot of questions about the Virtual World Education Consortium and many of the different things that we've brought up today. And we also want to open this up for you to um, talk about the obstacles that you have that the Virtual World Education Consortium might be able to help you with 
as we um, as we move forward, because not all of us want to go explore a lot of other environments outside of Second Life. So we might start um, start with the text chat now and see what questions we we have. And Ellie, feel free to jump in. I'm going to look at the local chat. Sure, Leah. Um, Leah's asking if do you have to be an educator? And actually, if you have an interest, we are interested in you. Um, it is going to be primarily educator focused and trainer focused, but there are lots of business folks that do. Um, have interest in teaching people things. Marley is one of those. And um, and so please join us, absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and hand you uh, a note card about the Virtual World Education Consortium that has the upcoming dates um, because it is open to anyone that's interested in education in virtual worlds. And you obviously are or you wouldn't be here at this wonderful conference. Oh, well, oh, Star. Val and I have um, great sympathy for doc students. <laughs> and. Um, that, that's an interesting question. Why don't, why don't we have a little discussion about that? Because um, um, it, it certainly might be. We're interested in your work. Let us know what it is, and, um, and, and maybe we can help you. Absolutely. If someone's working on um, research of, that has any um, alignment with virtual worlds, of course, the Virtual World Education Consortium would be a great opportunity to, um, to help with that type of research. Yes, and if there's any questions about the VR Exploders Club, Bethany's mentioning that. Um, I'm personally very interested in, in researching that topic. We, after each event, I send out a form for people to record their feelings about it and their insights about it so that we can document these. We're in a really exciting time with these environments just really exploding. So that it was a typo. We, we called it the VR Explorers. But I think Bethany might have been the one that, or Marie, no, Marie accidentally typed in Exploders, and Bethany said, let's just keep that name because it's exploding around us. And I did put um, Marie's email in the chat because she had to slip out um, for a good thing, <laughs> and she certainly wants you to contact her if you're interested in information about it. Isn't it so fun, LV? It was really, really fun. Yes, and Molly brings up the campfires. Um, I don't know if Dodge is here today, but Dodge was the one at the at one of our brainstorming sessions that brought up how years ago, some of you have been around a long time, ISTE used to have campfires where new people in Second Life could just go hang out and just talk and new people could learn and, and mentors could mentor and men mentoring doesn't have to be a formal you know come into the library and ask a research question kind of a thing um, which people think when they think of office hours mentoring can be simply chatting and talking about where you are in this virtual world emerging time of history. And so if uh, campfires can be cross community and uh, Zinnia created a great logo for us so that all of the different groups could use it and, and be part of this cross community campfire chat. It doesn't have to be a campfire. It could be office hours. It could be wherever you want it to be. But when you're in world and you're open to having someone just come and visit, you can be on our spreadsheet so people will know that that's what you're offering.
Jazz mentions um, loving these spreadsheets. It's been, we, we're, we, it's constantly changing, trying to figure out the way to archive, you know, what all of us have been doing. And for now, we're putting it all in that one space. We're putting it all together through spreadsheets and different things at the Virtual World Education Consortium. Because how many of you have ever created some great content here in Second Life, but then it changes and you have to go in and change all those slides and textures and and it's constantly changing and so um, we want to help with that so that when we don't have to go in and change things all uh, so many uh, times and it's less frustrating yes and we want to remind you we are not trying to replicate all the great groups that are happening here in virtual worlds. Um, <clears throat> we are trying to bring it, bring us all together to share resources, to um, solve, solve some common problems, um, and to support each other. Exactly well, not give you more to do. And so also the consortium is not just a place to brainstorm how to get over the problems that we have, but also share what has worked, you know, what has worked for your community so that, you know, we can all learn better and, and keep moving forward. And for those of you that have been around a little while, we literally we were trying not to start a whole new group uh, here in Second Life, but we found that we really needed to do that. So that here's the group joiner, as Val mentioned. Um, so it may be a surprise to some of our um, our folks who were founders <laughs> that we did give in and do that. And um, just just to clarify too, the purpose is also um, that each each time we'll sort of have a little focus on the different problems and obstacles as they continue and it's open for all it's not like you're going to be going to a lecture um, and Ellie if you want to say a little bit about the one that's coming up it's a topic that kept coming up was this concept of mentoring and how important it is that we're both mentors but we're also mentees. I'm, I'm learning as well as teaching. Um, a teacher's always learning. And so um, that, that topic kept coming up, and that's kind of going to be the focus, which I think will be a great uh, thing for all of us to focus on. Absolutely, Val. So we're, we're bringing folks together to talk about what do they do, what do they see mentoring being, and what is successful for them just try to flesh that out a little bit and see how we can share that across all the groups to um, to promote mentorship professional mentorship here in virtual worlds um, and we've all had mentors <laughs> haven't we and and then you evolve to becoming one as you become um, more more expert like um, and, and as people just reach out to you so that and is I noticed certainly Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just just noticed the question or the uh, more of a comment from Sidearm, a, a question about could we post a page of PhDs completed using virtual worlds and VRs? Um, absolutely. We actually have a project going on at the Community Virtual Library to create a bibliography of virtual world research and certainly dissertations on that topic, which mine was, you know, on the topic of virtual worlds. And um, so if you're interested in that, we, of course, want librarians to help with this creation of a, of a bibliography. It would help researchers to have it all in one place where they don't have to spend hours searching for, you know, quality um, research journal articles and dissertations
patents on the topic. And we'd like to pool all of that and put it in one place. That's a goal for this consortium. And IM me later or email me if that's something that you would like to help with. And Val, I love hanging out with the librarians because they are so good at pooling. I love the word pooling. Um, so that is part of the main thing that we're trying to do is bring people together, bring things together, bring research together. You know, librarians have always been um, early adopters of technology because we had to. Books are not king of the information hierarchy anymore. We had to go digital early. And um, so, you know, the Community Virtual Library is celebrating 15 years here in Second Life. And and one of our amazing builders, Dawn Graymist, some of you know she built the Marley Molina Music Library. Um, she's building a new uh, library building for us. And so you will be invited to, on Sunday, April 15th, a really fun celebration at our new library building and it's the library is 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 to help you it's to help all the the people who are learners and educators in virtual environments to promote what they're doing that's the whole that's the whole purpose and i'm really so glad that the virtual world education consortium uh, can can be a place to um, connect that work I think most of you probably pulled up the spreadsheet that Ellie showed you, and some of you, many of you are on it. Would you type a Y in the text chat if you're on the spreadsheet, like sidearms, office hours, and verbella? Um, there's different worlds where people hold their office hours, and if you're not on it, uh, you'll be thinking about where you are, and, and if you choose a time when people could maybe connect with you. You'll notice it has several pages, and I believe it's the last page, Ellie, that tells about different communities, and we want to grow that page as well. Yes, that last page is trying to um, advertise uh, repeating events. I see Sidearm just said, I've learned that having office hours just means being logged in for an hour while you do your regular work. That is so true. Sometimes in my office hours or my ref shift at the library, that's when I can make appointments with people who I may want to mentor, or I can just work on the work that I'm working on and someone can pop in and talk with me. So it's like we're offering ourselves as resources to help others while we're doing our work and it's such a good use of time and if, it's like if if no one comes during that hour i get a lot of work done if not i'm helping someone else it's a great it's a win-win situation we have had a few people um advertising their office hours a little bit and getting some folks to come in as well through their groups so that's another um, approach that we're celebrating. And, um, you know, it, I, I really want to reiterate again that this concept of office hours can be whatever you want it to be. For me as a librarian, it's my reference shift because the Community Virtual Library is a real library in a virtual world. And so I want to, to keep that tradition and we can balance tradition and innovation. That's my goal. And so I serve there at the reference shift, but I can walk right out the back door to the campfire because I love when Dodge said, let's also have an in informal campfire where people can just come and hang out. We can do both.
Yes, our bell. Um, Beth, I went in and made it bigger. It was too small for people to notice. <laughs> I'm going to make it even bigger. We'll have a giant bell for people to ring. <laughs> There's that link to the spreadsheet again in case you uh, didn't want to scroll back and chat and look for it. And you'll notice first page, Second Life, second page, Open Sims, oh no, second page is web-based worlds, then Kitely or Open Sim Worlds, then the VR capable worlds, and, uh, and then group information about community groups. So it's a one-stop place of who is in what world and when, and it can be changed easily. So let's say all of a sudden your schedule changes and you can't be in Kitely that day, uh, you know, from then on. You can just tell Ellie or me and we'll, we'll fix that for you so that it can stay up to date. Uh, and yes, Duncan, the Community Virtual Library, we do. We, we have planted flags in. We just put the entire Dickens Project research over in 3D Web Worlds, which is a web-based virtual world. And, you know, we're in Kitely. We're in Avacon. We're in some of the open um, web-based worlds. So we, we, we strive to go out everywhere. We're in Altspace VR. Marie set up a special little room for us there. So, um, and you can be part of that, too, so that you're not, like, separated from all these spaces because none of us can be in all of them so if we can if we pool our resources then we're aware of all of them yes yeah, so if you need to be added to the document um, just keep the link our emails are at the top so you don't have to remember them and we would be happy to Val or I would be happy to add you uh, yes, Galen's saying, I just need several computers. So true. Sometimes we log in and uh, Ellie will be at her office hours here at the Community Virtual Library and over in Kitely at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that in real life, but I can do it here. <laughs> it's a strategy. Yes, we have Galen, and also, you know, some of, sometimes we have alts to go to do something if we can't be there, but I never feel the same. It's like I've sent someone else in my place, sort of a, a surrogate. You know, it's like I my own avatar is me. I don't know if you all feel that same way, but my alt is just, you know, nobody knows who that is really. But So I prefer to have the same name in every world and, and be authentic as Zinnia always says you know authentic avatar that's what I strive for awesome guys thank you so much thank you BWBPE for having us conference is great um, I'm a little prejudiced, but I think it really is, and uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to share about um, BWEC here. Thanks so much, and Val, thank you for all your work with this. Appreciate it. And thank you all for coming. You're a great crowd. <laughs>